Hey everybody, we have a Linksys Cisco E3000 router here. Uh, this is actually from a friend of mine, and um, I believe it got hit by a power surge. The uh, adapter's dead. I already verified that, so I have a uh, another one that I'm using for testing, and if I can fix it, I will get them another adapter. So I've already taken the screws out. It uses those security screws. Not very good security screws though, because I just used a normal, uh, what is that, a T, T8 Torx. It actually fits right in there. I don't even need to bust the little pin out. So, more of those awesome insecure security screws. So, I'll show you what I've done so far. I have a, uh, a switch hooked up uh, to this. So I should be getting some sort of light on port four if it's seeing it, but it's not. Uh, I can show you just using a uh, an old 10100 port or switch. It's coming out. We should see. Uh, let me see. Let me get the right. See, so that means I should, between there and here, should have the same thing and I don't. You can see we have nothing on that end. So that tells me that this thing isn't booting up. And plus, the way that's flashing, I don't even know if you guys can see that. It's really dim. So anyway... I'll show you what I found so far. Plug that and get it out of the way. There's the capacitor on the 1.28 side. The C52 right here. That drives one of the radios, power to the radio. And this one is, I don't know if you can make that out, but it's kind of bloated. The voltage seems okay when I check it with the meter, but I don't have a scope to see if it's clean. I said I think most of it is okay so you got 5 volts 3.29 1.24 and 1.3 I want to change that so I have another capacitor it's physically larger and it's a little bit bigger. It's a 470 at 16 instead of a 470 at 10. But this is a, uh, I'm trying to remember the brand, but it's a real brand instead of that one. So let's get the power cord out and let's get the board out so we can unsolder and replace that. I had a tool for these, but this seems to work just fine. And those are going to stay. See if there's anything on the bottom that looks bad. I don't see anything obvious. No blown off traces. Just some dirty uh, flux. That's fine. So that's this one right here. Let's get some fresh solder on it. Then we'll get the solder pump. I didn't think that would get it all. Hey, it's loose though. Let's uh, there we go.
There we go. Let's see what the old one measures as. Now, sure, these routers are not expensive, but I'm trying to do this on the cheap for someone. Doesn't have a lot of money to spend. Seven hundred and seventy microfarad. Without any load, I imagine the ESR is pretty bad. Yeah, it's supposed to be four seventy at ten. So who knows? Bottom's all puffy, top's puffy. Not good. Stripe side is negative. Watch these leads won't fit. Yeah, they're tight. Well, they will go through though. Just gotta get them straight. Hope that's not going to stick up too high now that I look at it. Physically, it might be too tall. Let's see, will that hit it? Hell yeah. Alright, well, in that case, let's see if. I'm glad I checked that before soldering it. Oops. There we go. And if this doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm not going to go too nuts on it. I have a couple spare routers I could even give them if I need to, so we'll see. Hopefully it works, though, because it would be pretty cool. Again. There's the 5G and the 5 gig number one antenna. So if 
bite me a little bit. So that looks good. Everything's back in. Let's put some power on it and see what happens. Hey, see that? Flashing lights. See that? I think we're in good shape. I'll do a uh, full reset on it and then set it up. But uh, according to my other phone, I'm seeing the Wi-Fi network now. So I think, of course it doesn't have internet, I think we're good to go. Wi-Fi lights on, power LED solid, that's flashing because it's pinging the little switch I have here so there you go if uh, your Linksys E3000 gets hit by lightning or power surge and you see a bloated cap for the 1.284 line change it out it's funny that took the whole thing down that little I don't know two cent piece I pulled this out of something else used but good I measured it I checked it with the fluke and it was fine well, let's see what the voltage is now. See if it's closer, if it's under 1.3, because that was over 1.3. Yeah, it's still 1.3. It just must have had some weird, something weird going on. So, yeah. I'll uh, set the cover back on. Oh, turn the power off. Snap the uh, top back on. And put the screws back in. And then I will find a uh, 12 volt 2 amp adapter to send along with it when I send it back to my friend. You can see it's just these four screws in the bottom. Again, they're security screws, but the little nub is so deep that you can just use a normal Torx or you can do it the uh, flathead method. In fact, I'll do that it's a little faster. The flathead method's kind of cool. It, um, you go in, you just kind of get to find a flathead that fits next to the pin and against the sides. See? Like that. And it's incredibly strong. Uh, worst case, you snap the pin off, and then you can just use a normal Torx driver. So, make sure the other ones are tight. Yep. That's it. That's all there is to it. And there we are. So if you have any questions, you know what to do. Put them down there. And uh, if you're not subscribing already, do that too. It'd be really cool. Uh, but aside from that, as usual, thank you for watching.